You can probably tell it's starting to fill in here a little bit at Greensboro Coliseum. The fans now starting to file in. The band is here. We're starting to hear the band. And we are counting you down to tip off as we are getting ready for NC State. Notre Dame, top of the hour, about 20 minutes away. We will dive more into this matchup after this. All right, the Irish getting ready to take on NC State. Coach, you, you know the leprechaun. Oh. I know him very well. I had him in class. He was an excellent student, got an A plus, and I know he's going to do the job for us again today. Look at <laughs> it. He, oh, he's here hanging out too, Coach. Oh, putting the crown oh. on the queen's head. We love to see it. I don't coach. know what Coach's grade is on rateyourprofessor.com. Look, I, that's what I want. Coach, I'm ready. I would say from the leprechaun, an A++. Plus plus. Good Absolutely. stuff there. We like him coming <laughs> over. And Coach, they're going to need a little extra enthusiasm and excitement as we know Olivia Miles officially ruled out of this game. See her coming out on the court with one of her buddies, Darren Mabry, on crutches. These two mean so much to this team, Coach. Yeah, they really do. We know that's what basketball is all about, though. Injuries happen. you got to play the hand you're dealt and don't look back. Let's move forward see who's going to step in. I love what we heard from Maddie earlier, Kelly, about the heart of this team and what you're going to see going forward without those two is hard. This is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I mean, seeing these two walking in, two great players. I really wish they were playing. I think every basketball fan in this building wishes they were playing. I wish Diamond Johnson was playing, but injuries happen. It's very interesting to see. Westbelt is starting. I, I see the starting lineup here for Notre Dame. Westbelt starting at the three. Notre Dame is starting Watson at the four, Ebo at the five. That is to counter what NC State did yesterday, yeah. pounding the ball inside to River Baldwin and Camille Hobby. The last time these two played in that NC State win. River Baldwin only played five minutes. Did not have a big impact. It was more hobby. Can those bigs, can the NC State bigs show up? And Neil Ivey already making that adjustment going with a really big lineup. Yeah, like you said, this game is, is about being together as a team. Notre Dame is not going to back down from nobody regardless who, who's playing or not. They're going to feed off Olivia and, and Mabry's energy on the bench. They're going to go out there. They're going to fight hard. And they're just not going to give up at all. You mentioned the starting lineup, Kelly, looking different. One thing that we know is the same is the Irish will need another big performance from Sonia Citron today because she has been the star so many times and we definitely saw her step up big time in their final game of the season. Kelly, what is it that Sonia does so well? Well, she's starting at point guard today. I know KK Bransford will also help handle the ball as well and she's going to have to handle a lot of those point guard duties. When Olivia Miles went out in the second quarter, in the, in the second half, Olivia Miles, or Sonia Citron, you see her handling the ball and they, get, they let her pass the ball in. They get her away from the play. See if you can lull the defense to sleep and forget about her. And they love the DHO, the dribble handoff with Sonia Citron. This is a great screen by Westfeld. Robinson gets caught. Sonia Citron feels Robinson on her back, and she knows I got to go directly to the rim and get a bucket there. And then also, I love what Citron did defensively against Louisville, anticipating this pass, reading Robinson's eyes, getting a steal, and she's off to the races. She's a really good finisher, giving up four inches to Josie Williams, still able to finish. And Citron at times earlier in the season was not as aggressive. She is starting to understand. She's still a young player, but she's starting to understand. She has to be aggressive. She has to go hunt her shots, especially with Olivia Miles out. And she's got to handle the rock. I would be shocked if we see Sonia Citron leave the floor at all today for the Irish. At 27 points, Coach, in their last outing, how important is she going to be today? She's a huge key, but honestly, somebody else has got to step up. we got to see. Maddie westfeld has got to do something. The inside game, KK Bransford is somebody that came along really well in that last Louisville game. Game. She's going to have to come up. I like her coming off the bench as a freshman. Let her watch the game a little bit and then come in. You mentioned the inside game, and I heard you guys touch on it a little bit, but NC State yesterday, 54 points in the paint. They were hard to stop. River Baldwin had herself a fantastic performance. Ivory, how important is NC State and that inside presence today? Oh, it's very important. they got to take advantage of the opportunity that they have against Notre Dame. And whether it's getting the ball in the post or just driving, finding those driving in, getting to the free throw line. Once again, let, you know, seeing the bas ball go in the basket, you know, that Diamond is not playing. So everybody has to step up and be big today. Look for Notre Dame to 
play some zone yes. to counteract that inside to stay out of foul trouble and to prevent that. NC State, who's going to carry the load for them and who's going to be the one to step up? Notre Dame is going to play barring something that we, you know, haven't really <laughs> seen. Seven players. They're going to play seven. They're going to bring Marshall off the bench. They're going to bring Prosper off the bench. Can NC State get them in foul trouble? It's the game within the game. It's, it's the coaching matchup between Wes Moore, who has 800 wins, and Mia Leiby, who's the ACC Coach of the Year. If I'm NC State, I am aggressive. I'm saying take a three if it's open. Yeah. If not, attack the rim. we got to get Notre Dame in foul trouble, especially for a team that played yesterday. I also coach, I'm intrigued to see if NC State presses a little bit. They have more depth than Notre Dame. Try to speed things up and just wear out Citron because yeah. she's going to have to do so much. And if not a full court press, pressure on the yeah. ball. you got to get up and guard Sonia Citron in the backcourt. I saw your face. What were yeah, your and we know that NC State is capable of doing that press because they showed it against North Carolina at NC State, and they turned them the ball, turned the ball over so many times. So that is a great point. If they, they can do that tonight, then it's definitely going to be tough for Notre Dame. NC State have five players yesterday that finished scoring double figures today, trying to take down the Irish. And NC State guys, of course, looking to win their fourth straight ACC tournament title. You've been there with the team that did it before, Coach. How tough is it? What's the biggest challenge? You know, it's really difficult. you got to take it one game at a time, and you got to stay in the moment, and you got to figure out what's the best way for us to just win this game by getting some subs in. How can we slow things down? How can we speed them up? You, you really have to be thinking, I got to win this game, but I'm also preparing for two more. Right. And, and one of the beneficial things for NC State in this building, mm -hmm. I see a lot of red. I know there's going to be some <laughs> green, but NC State fans are right down the road. They showed up yesterday. They're back again to get today. So we'll see how the momentum goes early. And just think about this, y'all. This is the quarterfinals, okay? We have eight teams left. Both of these teams at some point this season were ranked in the top ten. And Notre Dame is still there. In a quarterfinal matchup, we've got the reigning champions in NC State and the one seed in Notre Dame. It's just crazy what this league has done. And for these matchups to deliver on Friday, it's going to be really fun. And, Coach, like you said, they really have to be locked in this game. One game at a time, one possession at a time. You can't overlook, you know, this game. Don't overlook Notre Dame because they're down, you know, some soldiers. You still got to go out there and fight and play the whole game. One possession at a time. Especially when this team is right Riding a six-game win streak heading into this game. The Irish have been hot. And, Kelly, I know you really liked what you saw from NC State, a team that struggled to find consistency but seems like they're getting hot at the right time. They played great yesterday. That was one of the more all-around games that we've seen NC State play all season. They got a little rest this past week. They're playing in front of a, a red crowd, if you will, and they played together. They turned their defense into offense. They obviously followed their coach's game plan of getting the ball inside. River Baldwin is playing with a lot of confidence, which is huge. Mimi Collins is a player that played really well when the, these two teams played back in January. So that's a player to keep an eye on. And weirdly enough, NC State has won two straight against Notre Dame. They beat them this year. They won their last matchup last year. So this is a team that has had a lot of success against Notre Dame as of late. We've talked a lot about NC State and their bigs, but how, how big could somebody like Saniya Rivers be in this game? Because we've seen her be really a key piece of the puzzle sometimes too, Coach. You know, you saw Ja'Kia Brown-Turner come out yesterday and make some shots, and that's what she's really got to do. And Saniya Rivers, an important part at both ends. She'll probably guard Citron, give her that length, and make it really difficult for her. But if Saniya Rivers can get loose in transition, she can drive the ball, and she can shoot the ball. And she's starting today, by the way, as well. So I do think they're going to throw different people at Citron. That has to be the focal point. You know Olivia Miles is out. Citron is going to play pretty much the whole game. They need her to score 20, probably and handle the rock and do so much. So if I'm NC State, I'm trying to make her life miserable. <laughs> yeah, pressure the ball at the same time. Make them have somebody else bring the ball up the court. You know, you got to find a way to at least give Citron a break. You know, set some down screens so she can come off and shoot. But like Rivers, she's very a long guard. She's a defensive mind guard. You know, she's going to get her points with a fast break, but she, hey, she's a great defensive player too as well. Notre Dame, the number one seed in this tournament for the first time since 2019. They have the eighth Coach of the Year and Neil Ivy, and we'll get to see them for the first time here in Greensboro. Coach, pressure, no pressure. What's that like?
like with the target on your back as the number one? You know, it's such, all eight teams are already in the tournament, so I don't think anybody has anything extra to play for except some bragging rights and, of course, a better seed in the NCAA tournament. Notre Dame doesn't want to give up that top four seed. NC State trying to get a little better seed, so I don't think there's any more pressure on the number one because, you know, now, without Olivia Miles, you're probably saying, you know what, <laughs> now, now there's maybe less pressure on us. According to uh, Charles Cream, it, Notre Dame can't drop out of the top four with a loss today, and a lot of that, of course, the committee will look at this game and say Olivia Miles didn't play. Yeah. But there's a pride factor, too, I think. This team beat you in the regular season. This is the team that, Coach, I'm, I'm going to say it, NC State took the title from Notre Dame back in 2020 and hasn't given it back yet. So there's a lot here. Also, every time Notre Dame's been a one seat in the ACC tournament, they've won the whole thing. Plenty of storylines to follow and lots of fans starting to pile in, including a very big women's basketball fan, Marcus Freeman, Notre Dame head football coach in the crowd getting you ready. We are about six and a half minutes away from tip-off between NC State and the Irish. We are just minutes away from quarterfinals game number two, Notre Dame and NC State. Time for our analysts to make their picks. Coach, I think I know where you're going. Tell me why. Nothing wrong with being confident, right? I'm going to go with the Irish. <laughs> that why? song you is know? Why, Coach? <laughs> I think they beat us last time. This is the time for us to get a little revenge. No? I think I just I, I trust Notre Dame more. NC State's been so up and down. I know there's a lot of red in this building. Notre Dame's talent, I think, is going to prevail here. Notre Dame, Notre Dame. Let's go, NC State. Let's go, NC State. Well, they're going to do it, Ivory. They're going to they're gonna pressure the ball. They're going to turn the ball over. Sit charge is going to get tired. NC State going to get the win, baby. <laughs> Look at Should this Tar Heel picking the wolf. Should pack. be a great matchup. Notre Dame, first time they're number one seed since 2019, but no stranger to winning at all. NC State trying to make their case for four in a row. We'll see you here at the half. Conferences mean circle dates. Legendary careers at one place. The Tar Heels have won their fourth championship in a row. It's a neighborhood on hardwood settling scores. One, two, three, three. Conference play is passionate and personal. Now the time has come for tickets to be punched and titles won. Perez will keep it and hit it with two points. Let's go to three, Pete. Welcome to Champ Week. Welcome to Champ Week in the Ally ACC Women's Tournament. Just about to get underway, the second of our four quarterfinals coming to you from Greensboro in the Women's ACC Tournament. Number one seed and regular season champion Notre Dame taking on three-time defending champion in the ACC Tournament, NC State. Earlier today was the Haley Van Lith show early for Louisville. 17 points from her alone in the first quarter as they eliminated a Wake team that came from behind yesterday to upset Florida State. And they will get, Louisville will get the winner of this game tomorrow in the semis, the other two quarters tonight, Virginia Tech, Miami, and Duke, North Carolina. North Carolina won the two regular season matchups between those two rivals. And we welcome you back to Greensboro. Pam Ward, along with Connecticut Sun head coach, Stephanie White, Angel Gray will join us shortly. And the big story around Notre Dame has revolved around Olivia Miles, their superstar guard who was hurt last Sunday as we will take a flashback to Louisville. It happened late in the second quarter, clutching her knee. There is still no report as to exactly what the injury is, but she is now ruled out indefinitely. She is not going to play today. We will not see her during the ACC tournament, frankly, unless a miracle happens. And she, along with Caitlin Clark, one of two players averaging 14.7 boards, six and a half assists, she is just a terrific player for this team. And now they have to figure out, like they did against Louisville, they won without her once she got off the court, how they can continue on in this tournament. Yeah, so much of this is going to ride on the shoulders of Sonia Citron. She's going to have to take over primary playmaking duties in the absence of Olivia Miles. And she sure stepped up to that challenge in the second half against Louisville. She had 27 in that ball game. 
But now she is going to be the primary focal point of every defensive scouting report. So finding ways to score, to get others involved. And oh, by the way, she's always guarding the opponent's best player. And in the last four games, she is averaging 17 points per game. They will need that today and as they progress in the postseason. NC State is without star guard Diamond Johnson, but they have other pieces, Angel Gray. Absolutely. Well, it's been a balancing act for the Wolfpack this season, and they've shown that they are at their best when it is done by committee. They have had everyone on their roster score in double figures in one game, as well as nine different players leading the team in scoring as well. That doesn't stop here in the tournament. They had five players score in double figures, and I was told that for those five players, those were career high in this tournament, including Jakia Brown-Turner, who said she struggled in previous games. During this time, she said, I needed the game, and I look to build on it today. Yes, Angel, in that game we saw yesterday, probably the Pack's most complete game since their win in Iowa City way back in early December. Yeah, it really was. It was a team that shared the basketball, that dominated the interior, that executed defensively, played consistent for 40 minutes. So we are underway, the Wolf Pack in their black uniforms, and Westbell got a piece of Brown Turner to start things off. K.K. Bransford, the freshman guard starting in place of Olivia Miles as we look at NC State starting five. JBT, as I James has been really good as of late, so much on Sanaya Rivers' shoulders though as the primary ball handler with Johnson out. And there is Diamond Johnson. She tried to give it a go, playing on that bad right ankle. And got it in a boot. We're not gonna see her this weekend either. We have the week between the ACC and the NCAA tournament, and I'm sure that everyone around the country hoping that players can use that rest to their uh, advantage. And the starting lineup for Notre Dame, as mentioned, transferred in for Miles. And Citron gets it going early. I'm not sure how that would win in. <laughs> Looked like it hit the bottom of the rim and bounced in. But I like that action for Sonia Citron, giving it up and getting it back on the elbow. Notre Dame's so good at playing off of those elbows. I'll be missing. And here's Citron bringing it up. Such a talent, just a sophomore herself. First team all ACC this year, along with her teammate and good friend Olivia Miles. This is a really good matchup for Notre Dame to start out without Olivia Miles because Wolfpack, not a team that's going to pressure you 94 feet. They're not going to turn you over a lot, be in passing lanes. So Notre Dame can have an opportunity to get into a flow. It's a traveling call as you see uh, Dara Mabry along with Olivia Miles. And this is that shot you talked about. A little bit of magic. James with the hobby screen, a little bit too strong. Citron is also a very good rebounding guard. Comes up with it for the Irish. These two teams met only once in the regular season. Notre Dame won at a sold out in this Coliseum. You see a little confusion offensively for Notre Dame. Not quite sure what they're running. They need the shot from Citron, and they banked in. Sonia Citron, she's, she's so steady, and she's so fundamental. Off the glass, that angle. You don't see a lot of young players use the glass And I know anymore. you love I that. I love it. Zanaya Rivers knocks down the shot. Coming off a very good all-around game in there. Win yesterday against Syracuse. First game for Notre Dame, the top four seeds had double buys and didn't play until today. Westbell bottled up by three players. James tied her up. She thought she had this, the steal and the breakaway. Citron just does such a good job of getting her defender on her hip. Eyes are up. She finds the corner of the glass. so far, ball on the floor. And here's the takeaway now for James. One on one against Citron, who played good defense, but James was able to score anyway. All right, James, 10 points and five assists yesterday against Syracuse. Rivers ran in 
into the Evo screen. Isaiah James has been impressive, and, and she's a player who didn't get a lot of minutes early in the season, and because of injury and opportunity that she's taken advantage of, she's now starting in a lead guard position. That's a tough angle to go off glass. Rivers called for the foul in the last play. Prosper, too strong off the glass after she rid herself of the defender. Prosper, a true freshman. With great promise from Montreal. Here's Citron, three on two. Can take it all the way. Why not? Nobody's in front of you. You see an open lane. Get the easy two. And right now it's NC State six, Sonia Citron six. We got a lot of you talking to us at the end of the season about Sonia Citron and just how unselfish she is that sometimes she has to remind her to take shots and now a lot riding on her shoulder. She has to really hunt shots and opportunities. Prosper finally got one to go after a couple more misses in the paint. Prosper like Olivia Miles and Uli and Roli to Notre Dame, the first two in Irish history. She's 17. Bobby, good pass to find her, and she got the spin. I still think that NC State, their advantage is on the interior. Really getting easy looks at the rim, getting post touches. Not because you have to shoot it, but they also are very good facilitators from that low block position. Put pressure on the defense. Citron goes in. and is called for the charge. Sonia Citron trying to get to the rim. Jada Boyd does an outstanding job of establishing herself outside the restricted area and taking the charge. Terrific play by Boyd, the veteran from Petersburg, Virginia. That's the first one on Sonia Citron. And needless to say, she can't get in the foul trouble. Today. Really, no one on the Irish could get into foul trouble. Their lack of depth is, is evident. You know, they're going to play this zone, so that can help. But rotations and then rebounding out of the zone is going to be important. Ball movement. Rivers got a good look. Westbound able to come up with it. Prosper waits for some help. Tried to get it inside to Watson. Madison Hayes, she played a really nice game yesterday against Syracuse. 30 minutes off the bench, 10 points, a couple of threes, look good. Maddie Hayes, another player who's taken advantage of, of opportunity. She can come in and give this team a lift. She's an excellent defender. You see she's getting the call to guard Sonia Citron. Good help defense by Boyd. Westbell left open. James directing traffic after picking up her dribble. Clock now into single digits. James with the floater that goes in. Isn't it always with, when a lefty shoots it just looks so pretty? Yeah. I mean, that was a tough shot. A floater on the baseline side that Isaiah James put in. And down four. Yes. Citron. Citron. With a chance at a three-point play. Speaking of tough shots and tough angles, Sonia Citron continues to get to the rim. Able to get it up off glass. She's got the chance for the end one when we come back. The Ally ACC Women's Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. ACC quarterfinal Friday, Sonia Citron off to a blazing start. She has not missed a shot, Steph White. Yeah, four for four from the floor, eight of Notre Dame's 10 points. 
going to have to get production from multiple people. And, and that's one thing that Neil Ivy talked about in the absence of Dara Mabry when she went down with her knee injury was that I asked everybody to give me 10% more. Now, without Olivia Miles on the floor, they're going to have to give another 10%. Everybody's going to have to step up. Everybody's going to have to contribute. And there you see Dara Mabry over there with the crutches. She has an ACL, and right next to her is Olivia Miles. Citron does complete the three-point play. And that's a lot of production sitting over there. Production, leadership, just steadiness. Mabry with that that jersey personality, and, and there you go. Yeah, I mean, you see you see their numbers, and look at what they're missing, scoring, rebounding, assists. I mean, Dara Mabry had 301 threes in her career, so somebody that stretches the floor. Rivers now with four. Yeah, the, the Mabry sisters, three of them went through Notre Dame. 803 threes between the three of them. They could shoot the lights out. That's a lot or something. Yes. And Sister Michaela, an assistant coach. Under Neal Ivey, who played for Muffet McGraw, won a national championship with her in 01. I believe they beat Purdue. And, uh, and Neal won one as an assistant coach. And you're looking at the ACC Coach of the Year. Well, what an outstanding job Neal has done with this team. She's been a part of this program and the great tradition with Notre Dame women's basketball. She understands what it takes, of course, working with a mentor in the McGraw and just continuing to, to build on what they've accomplished. Hassan Prosper, after the turnover, buries it and will head to the free throw line. Zaya James called for and there is Muffet McGraw, our colleague who doing such a great job with the rest of our crew over there. And <laughs> saw her earlier today, said she misses head coaching 0%. She loves what she's doing. The stress is down and, and the pride certainly. And Neil Ivey, not just as a head coach, but as a human being. Yeah. And her wonderful son, Jaden, now in the now in the uh, NBA. But, and what a, what a way to come back after they didn't make the tournament. Yeah, no question. You know, it's 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 not rebuilding, really. It's, 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 it's reloading, but Neil Ivey putting her own stamp on this program and, and continuing the legacy. Look, it's not easy to follow a legend. It's certainly not. We've seen a lot of times where, where it's it's very, very difficult, and Neil Ivey has just continued uh, to, to take this program and to continue to elevate it. Saying always go, you want to be the person who follows the person who follows the legend. <laughs> Have a little b in there, because it's tough. And that is a charge. Jenna Brown, the uh, Stanford grad transfer. This is what River Baldwin does. She is one of the best bigs at taking charges in the country that I've ever seen. She wow. gets herself ever. in position. I mean, th there aren't a lot of, you see a lot of guards that are in position right. to take charges, but, but bigs, and River Baldwin takes pride in that. Baldwin was great yesterday against Syracuse. In fact, didn't miss a shot. 14 points, hit all seven shots, seven rebounds in less than 20 minutes. And one of her best games of the season. Off the inbounds, won't go for James. There's Baldwin, but she brought the ball down. Rivers. James, a little ball fake. And then got it in off glass. Yeah, that time used the glass. She's telling the crowd to get into it, as you might expect. This is home court advantage for NC State. Raleigh area about an hour away from Greensboro. Ebo stuffed by Baldwin. Isaiah James is so good at this little ball fake on her drives. Look, you just think she's going to kick it out for the three. And then River Baldwin again making her presence known, this time on the defensive end of the floor. 13 seconds to shoot for the Irish. Approaching a minute to go in the first quarter, and that's thrown in the opposite direction of where Prosper was heading. Six turnovers for the Irish, uncharacteristic. But 
Missing Olivia Miles. Brown in there now. She's the one who came in and played the remainder of the second quarter when Olivia went down in Louisville last week. River's terrific bounce pass to the cutting. Isaiah James and Aaron Sink. The energy that Isaiah James brings to this Wolfpack team, it's huge. It's an intangible that matters, that makes a difference to your teammates. Another offensive foul on Brown, drawn by River Baldwin. River Baldwin. But execution against the zone, moving without the basketball. Look at that dime by Sanaya Rivers and the float game on point for Isaiah James. So two charges on Jenna Brown, both of them drawn by River Baldwin. So Jenna Brown now has exited. Clock is off now for the pack. Baldwin got Evo up in the air, then lost it. And that's not good clock awareness by Bransford. <laughs> A little bit more time. That reminds me of the Hamby Heave back in the WNBA, <laughs> but with Hamby, it went in. It went in, yes, <laughs> yes it did. In Vegas beat Chicago a few years ago. Now we need a heave. Good first quarter for NC State as they have an 18 to 14 lead. When we come back, we'll have more on the L. Ivy making history. Welcome back to Greensboro. We've got a great one on our hands. Wolfpack with a four-point edge over Notre Dame after the first quarter. And when it comes to making history, Neil Ivey has become the queen at it. When she went back to her alma mater to take the job, she became the first African-American female to be the head coach at her school and just recently became the first African-American female to win a regular season ACC title and coach of the year in the ACC. This is a perfect example of if you see her, you can be her. She said she's humble, that she can be an example to her players and all the women looking up to her. I know that Coach Muffet McGraw was a huge inspiration for her as well, but I just say you got to crown her, and she's doing an incredible job. Yeah, she really is. And, you know, Neil Ivey was a part of the first national championship team at Notre Dame in 2001, winning it in her hometown of St. Louis. She's been this longtime assistant on Muffet McGraw's staff, went with the Memphis Grizzlies for that year, came back, and, you know, she has just been the epitome of excellence since she was a player. Also the first black head coach to win coach of the year and a regular season title in women's basketball in the ACC. Notre Dame with a big win against Louisville to win the regular season and get the number one seed in this tournament. She was just a tremendous player. The great teams at Ruth Riley and the rest and they won the title. That doesn't count. She was at Notre Dame for quite a while, as you mentioned, after being at Xavier, and then the one year with the Grizzlies, and came home again to take over when Muffet retired. That is the fourth offensive foul called on the Irish. That one on Ebo. Citron on the floor, got rid of it in the nick of time. But then James stepped in the way, couldn't convert. And you, you look at the lineup that's on the floor for Notre Dame, and you, know, you, you lose Dara Mabry, you lose Olivia Miles, so you've got a whole bunch of forwards on the floor that have to be ball handlers. Nine turnovers already in this ball game. They're finding a way to get themselves into a rhythm offensively, take care of the basketball, get high percentage looks. That's going to be important, not just for this ACC tournament, but for the NCAA tournament. Good 
just timing and how quickly the ball moves when the point guards are on the floor. Right now, it's not moving quickly. Westfeld with the turnaround, rebound for Collins. You know, one of the things I think that Notre Dame can also look for is KK Bransford. They give her the ball on the elbow. They ISO her. They allow her to go to work. She hasn't gotten a touch there here today. I think that's another way to find opportunities to get scores. Yeah, Bransford has not taken a shot for the Irish. Citron, Evo, who missed some time with a lower body injury. Probably not a great shot. But one of the best things that Olivia Miles does on the floor is get easy shots for her teammates. She makes their life easier because of how she breaks down defense, because of how she delivers a ball to a shooter in a shooter's pocket, a shooter's pass every time. So right now, this team is having to individually manufacture shot opportunities, and it's tough. Miles again out indefinitely with the right knee injury. Avery out since late January with her own knee injury and another one and done. And, and give, give NC State credit. They are forcing Notre Dame post players to take contested jump shots. They are executing the defensive game plan. And meanwhile, they're not making shots either. No team, neither team has scored in the first three minutes of this quarter. Westbound. So that's three straight possessions where it's one pass and a shot. You're not used to seeing that from the Irish. But this is that growth period for them to figure out how to play without Miles. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure it out. Rivers guarded by Evo. Good defense. This is a terrific defensive effort by Lauren Ebo. Stays straight up, vertical. Stays connected. That's disciplined one-on-one -on -one defense. Ebo came in second in the ACC Sixth Player of the Year voting to Michaela Timpson at Florida State. Kia Brown Turner. Another great defensive effort by Prosper. These two teams are combined 0 for 11 here in the second quarter. Prosper and Brant Bransford, two true freshmen on the floor. Prosper should be in her second semester of her senior year in high school. That's how young she is. And another empty possession for the Irish. <laughs> Brown Turner with the shot clock in the single digits. Westfeld, excuse me, with the play. Prosper can't finish, but who else? Citron there, and we finally have a basket in the second quarter. Citron into double figures. Slices the lead to two. Winner gets Louisville tomorrow in the semis. Nice. In stereo. We nice. were in sync, yes. <laughs> What a pass, and this is what NC State did so well yesterday, their interior passing. Getting the ball in that soft spot of the zone, the ACC logo, and finding the right pass. That one was to Boyd, and then it works on the other end as Watson found Bransford. First bucket for KK. And, that's, and KK Bransford's going to have to be a part of this offensively. She's going to have to be an initiator, a facilitator. And she's very versatile offensively. Get her touches in different positions. Good double team, so State had to kick it back out. James Short. Good box out by Watson, the Oregon transfer, her first year in South Bend. Oh, 
Hansford bottled up by Hobby. JBT, a little bit too strong. Westbell, the only player under there for the rebound. I'm not sure that NC State's gotten a ball reversal. They're getting it sometimes to the high post position, but they haven't really forced the Notre Dame zone to shift with multiple passes. Transferred over Brown Turner. Prosper could not save it. <laughs> NC State with a one point lead here in Scenic. Greensboro, North Carolina. They've been waiting since 1991. The pack is back on top. This season has been nothing but crazy. One thing's going to be consistent, the NC State's ACC champions. For the third year in a row, ACC champions. That's called a three-peat, Kelly. All right. Welcome back, NC State. Yes, with Westmore have won three straight ACC tournament titles coming in to this tournament. And they are the eighth seed. And Westmore doing such a great job with a huge turnover as far as uh, personnel this year. Trying to fit these new pieces in with a couple of veterans like Boyd and Brown Turner. Boyd scores. Was Notre Dame, they have five tournament titles. They had the first four as soon as they came into the league. But the school that has the most ACC tournament titles isn't even in the league anymore. That would be Maryland. Conference relocation. Yep. And then they went to the Big Ten and made some noise. That is true. Changed the way the Big Ten played. Yeah. And now you know? it's one of the best. Mm -hmm. This game, as you can tell by the score, is not setting any offensive records. Neither team has hit a three-point shot. Combined 0 for 10. These aren't the records we want. No. Prosper. Got in there. Boyd thought it went off of Prosper. So does Wes Moore. T.R. Cruz hearing an earful from Wes. Rod Creech and Talisa Green, our other officials this afternoon. But, but a little concern now. That is Nat Marshall as Neil Ivey comes over to check on her. Looks like Prosper and Marshall collided. Prosper got her with her elbow. Not a Leo Marshall. Junior from Queens, New York, went to Christ the King High School. He's produced some pretty good players. Yeah, just a few. Yeah. <laughs> Might have heard of them. Two birds, Charles, Charles, yeah, guys. a lot of them. Those guys. Citron blocked by Boyd. Citron with 11 of Notre Dame's 18 points, also with seven rebounds. Westfeld off the inbounds. Maddie Westfeld's one of the players for Notre Dame that's going to have to step up. You know, she's a player who a year ago averaged 12 points a game, is down just a little bit this year, but has been a little up and down. And I, I think the Irish need her to step up and be an offensive presence. And with that bucket, Maddie Westfeld, Westfeld is now over 1,000 career points at 999 coming in. Prosper up in the air. Well, Hayes had a good look, but couldn't get it to go home. You know, that was Westfeld's first basket after she missed her first five shots today. 
Citron looking for some help. Prosper stepped on the baseline. Turnover number 11 for Notre Dame. They average just over 15 per game on the season. You see Marshall's got the ice pack on the eye. Inside, two minutes to go in the first half. Nothing coming easy for either team. No. Ball's not really moving, not getting any breaking down of defense. It's been one or two pass and, and contested jump shots on both ends. Bransford out to Citron, who's guarded by Hayes. Tip pass. Another turnover for the Irish. Brown Turner, a little bit too ambitious. Taylor Tannenbaugh taking over with our studio folks. Is that Notre Dame Irish green she's got on over there? Ivory Latta, as usual, chilling. And of course, the one and only Kelly Gramlich. Former great sharp shooter at Clemson. Looking forward to hearing from them at halftime. But great to have them here. They will be here all weekend. I don't know. Gramlich and Latta, great offensive players. And I don't know. I bet they're not loving the second quarter. <laughs> I'll bet not. We, we want to see the ball go through the net, don't we? Yeah, both teams combining for only 10 points so far in the second quarter. Shot clock into single digit. Citron got plunked by Hayes, who put her arm up to defend her and instead fouled her. First one for Maddie. Former Mississippi State player, now in her second year with the pack. So the shot clock goes back up to 20 for the Irish. Westfeld. Nice. Yeah, that was a nice looking move by Maddie Westbell. Created just enough space, soft touch. Ties the ball game up, and now the Wolfpack fans getting a little restless. Boy, that's got to be a walk. And it is. Good call, fans. Good Thank call. you. That was, a, that was a very good call. Yeah. <laughs> Maddie Westfeld goes to work on the block and is really patient, is able to shoot over the outstretched contested hand of Jada Boyd. So now the Irish have the opportunity to use up the rest of the clock in the half and take the lead. Westfeld over the Ebo screen, the first three of the game for either team. The Irish on top, their first lead since it was eight to six. They outscored NC State 11 to four in the second quarter, and the Irish lead it by three. Citron with eight, or 11, pardon me, eight for James to lead the way for NC State. Both teams shorthanded, no Diamond Johnson for the pack, no Miles or Mabry for the Irish. Let's go over to Angel Gray. Well, there wasn't a lot of offense in that second score, quarter, but you outscored them 11 to four. So what were you seeing as of late that you like to build on in that department? Yeah, um, I thought Maddie had an incredible second quarter. You know, she got hot right at the end. I thought we took some good shots. We just couldn't execute those shots. Um, yeah, so I thought it was, it, I thought I was going to Maddie. So she did a great job. As well as Sonia Citron, who's walking away at halftime with close to a double-double. What more can you ask of her? What more can you ask of your team with Olivia Miles not being in your rotation right now? Yeah, they all know that, you know, love is fueling us today. You know, we lost two of our heart and soul players and Darren live right now and everyone's trying to do a little bit more. Um, and Sonya does whatever I ask her to do. Honestly, I'm sometimes guarding the best player, running the point and being our leading scorer. So she's giving us all she can get. She's got the, on the floor with those 50-50 loose balls. She's amazing and just, we're gonna just try to keep on fighting. Thank you so much. Coach. Thank you. Seven nothing run for Niella Ivy's team to end the second quarter, they take a lead into the locker room. 
Time now to get you over to our studio crew. It's Taylor, Ivory, and Kelly. into the ACC Network Halftime Report here courtside. Taylor Tannenbaum alongside Ivory Latta and Kelly Gramlich. You see Notre Dame taking the 25-22 point lead into the halftime break thanks to the first three we saw of this game <laughs> from Maddie Westbell there leading in the final seconds of that first half. We'll start with you, Ivory. NC State, a really balanced effort offensively from them. No Diamond Johnson, but Isaiah James leading Yeah, the definitely balanced um, effort for the, for the team. Uh, they started off very well, you know, against the zone, getting behind the zone. You know, passing the ball like this. Tonight Rivers, great passer. A floater right there for James. Uh, they have to do more of that. They have to get more behind the zone. They stopped shifting the ball uh, side to side. So that really stagnated their offense. And in Sarah, Notre Dame was able to kind of pack it in a little yeah. more because of those cuts from NC State. NC State's not shooting it well. They're 0 for 7 from 3. Sonia Citron has done everything possible. 11 points, 7 rebounds in this first half. Handling the rock. Ivory, as we know, that's very difficult to do. But Matt Maddie Westfeld was the difference maker in the second quarter, all seven of her points in the second quarter. We've heard Coach say it many, many times. <laughs> Westfeld has to step up, and she did that, Taylor. What more can Maddie Westfeld do to take advantage of NC State here in the third and fourth quarter? She has to stay aggressive. Yes. Continue to look for her shots. Cannot get in foul trouble because they need her out there, Ivory. Yeah, you're right. She definitely had to stay aggressive. Uh, X for the ball. You know, you a hooper. You, you can go out there, you can score X for the ball and be more aggressive. Yeah, it's pretty incredible what we've seen. You can't ask for much more from Sonia Citron at this point who has 11 yeah. points seven rebounds on double double watch in the first half with their point guard Olivia Miles on the bench watching intently right next to head coach Neil Ivy. all right coming up after the break here on this ACC Network halftime report uh, we'll, we'll talk about what happened earlier in the day Louisville picking up a huge win this morning over maybe a little bit of a tired way for us we'll break it all down Sonia Citron man she's not tired she got a whole nother half to go we'll have more <laughs> after the break stay with us Louisville 0 for 3 against these teams in the regular season, but like we've said, it's tournament time. It is March. Louisville playing much better basketball, so we'll see if they can get redemption tomorrow against one of these two teams. Hey, we got a game here going on behind us. The second half, we're gearing up for it. Notre Dame up 25 to 22. Obviously, <laughs> stayed at half. And these kiddos with the shades on, they're ready to watch some more. Sonia Citron and Isaiah James. Those are some Pack fans. Enjoy the second half of this one, guys. We'll see you after the game. Welcome back to Champ Week in the Ally ACC Women's Tournament. Olivia Miles and Dara Mabry unavailable for Notre Dame today, but they have had to rely on Sonia Citron, who certainly has delivered. Notre Dame with the three-point lead. Isaiah James trying to pick up some of the slack with Diamond Johnson unavailable. Very low scoring. Only four points for NC State in that second quarter, lowest of any quarter of the season, Pam Ward, along with Stephanie White. Uh, Angel Gray with us as well. But Sonia Citron, we knew she'd have to shoulder a lot of the load, and she's delivered. Yeah, she has. Nearly a double-double at halftime. Started from the first play of the game. Aggressive, attacking the rim, playing off of the elbows. She's got to score the basketball. She's got to be a facilitator. She's got to be a terrific defender. 11 points, 5 of 10 from the floor to go along with 7 rebounds. And you know, for the Irish, getting multiple players to contribute. Matty Westbell got going a little bit there towards the end of the half as well. That's right, Westbell with 7 points in the second quarter. Time now for Food Lions. Food for thought. What you would like to see the teams do in the second half. Yeah, I think NC State has to look to play in the paint. They dominated inside against Syracuse yesterday. Get some more touches on the inside. For Notre Dame, take care of the ball. On the season, you see what they averaged. 12 already here today. Give yourself a chance on the offensive end. Get that thing moving. Eight of NC State's 22 points have come off of Notre Dame turnovers. That second quarter, Notre Dame outscored them 11 to four. Seven of those 11 points again in the second quarter came courtesy of Maddie Westbeld. Only one made three in the entire first half between the two teams, and that was Westbeld late in the second quarter. It's going to change this half. It's going to be raining threes. You, got, you feeling it? Feeling it. There's a two for Ebo. Let's go over to Angel Gray. Westmore at halftime told me that he's not too thrilled about being out-rebounded 21-13 on the boards. He said, 
we have to have a different sense of aggression, a sense of urgency coming out in the second half. He also said that Notre Dame's man, when they switched to that, was giving them some issues. So he's wanting to see if he can have a few more ball screens at the top of the key involving Evo. Meanwhile, Zaniah Rivers with a terrific pass. Yeah, it sure was. And Jada Boyd getting one of those paint buckets that we talked about. Uh, I think that in the Wolfpack, they have really good post players who make great decisions once they get the ball. Continue to try to get them some touches. 54 paint points yesterday for the pack against Syracuse was a season high, and looks like the Irish are thinking the same thing. Hey, that is textbook. Give it up. Repost at lower position. Lauren Ebo going to work. Has five games, lower body injury, working her way back. Second leading rebounder on this team after Olivia Mullins. He was out with a knee injury. Citron, three on two. Rivers came out to contest a little late. Biggest lead of the game for the Irish. You have to respect Sonia Citron's ability to shoot that mid-range pull-up, and she just hesitated just enough to get James to bite. Right, because you know she can get you on either level. Oh, the diagonal, yeah, it was a little late. A little bit late. See, that's the difference in getting a shot up and not. Yep, leading to a turnover as well. Now we're going to make a couple of subs at the next whistle. KK Bransford getting the start today for Miles. Westbelt giving it up to Watson, who had to get. She was stuck under the basket and was able to maneuver for the shot. Watson's first points. Now here come the, the Pack fans. Get their team back into this game. Bobby got the little roll. Second basket for Camille Hobby, who has already gotten her undergraduate degree at State. Citron got plunked by James. Sonia Citron in transition. You see just a slight hesitation to get James to bite. Gets the two. And nice pass by Maddie Westveld. And Kylie Watson understanding where she was on the floor. Does a good job of splitting the defenders. And get the bucket. Watson finished the regular season very strongly for the Irish as Citron goes to the line. Prosper back into the game. Bransford. Citron, an 80% free throw shooter. Freshman of the year last year in the league. First team all conference this year. One out of two. Ebo couldn't handle it. Turner. Cut off by Ebo. Win working against Evo. Nothing doing. Westbelt, Westbelt head up. Prosper is going out of bounds, so she tried to tip it back to Watson. And then Watson just came blasting in to try to get the loose ball and mostly got Isaiah James. Ball was deflected and Kylie Watson just hustling in after it and colliding with Isaiah James. You know, fortunately, Isaiah James is able to get up and because that, that looked <laughs> that looked nasty. It's like a football play, and thank goodness Isaiah's foot wasn't planted because that really could have been bad for her knee. And then she floats one in. Yeah, she's got really great touch on her floater. Had 10 points against Syracuse yesterday, 10 so far this afternoon. Quarterfinal matchup, winner gets Louisville in the semifinal tomorrow. Westfeld kicking it out around the horn. Watson lost the dribble and then got it blocked by Rivers. Shot clock. 
way down. Chased down nicely by Watson, so they get an extra 20 seconds. Settle it down a little bit. Citron getting some instructions from Neil Ivey, who is a tremendous point guard herself. Off the rim. And then Citron fouled Rivers trying to get the ball. Well, Zaya James able to bounce back up from that collision. And then on the other end, she's been so good on that baseline, the floater. See, she's still a little bit shaken up. That last foul, by the way, not on Citron, but the second on Watson. And she had one of those yesterday, too, yeah. in the game against oh, that's Syracuse. That's a great point, yeah. It's a couple of hard knocks for her. Six now for James, who traveled. Picked up a little bit on the way in. Sly James, a sophomore from Virginia Beach. A 20 at Virginia Tech towards the end of the regular season. Terrific game with a lot of her family on hand. Face guarding Citron. Little lob into Watson. Nice pass by Westbell. Yeah, and, and much better ball and player movement for the Irish in the second half. Multiple players are touching it. It's crossing the midline two and three times. And as a result, they're getting higher percentage looks. Yeah, you made that point, especially the first quarter. Notre Dame, just a lot of one pass and shoot possessions. JBT, a little bit too strong. Watson was literally <laughs> holding. River Baldwin, that's her third foul. Well, this is really good execution on the screen and roll. Maddie Westfeld finds Kylie Watson for two. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. 30 years have passed since Jim Valvano's legendary speech. It's been 30 years of battles. 30 years of strength. And 30 years of, of never, never giving, giving up. up. Believe it or not, it is the 30th anniversary of Jim Valvano's famous Don't Give Up, Don't Ever Give Up speech that launched the V Foundation for Cancer Research. We are taking this moment to celebrate Jimmy V's incredible legacy of never giving up and the impact of the V Foundation over the last three decades. Join our celebration and support Jimmy V's dream of victory over cancer at v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes to cancer research. And of course, NC State, the uh, school where Jim Valvano won that improbable national championship. It's been 30 years since that speech and the, the good that that organization has done the lives it has saved. Absolutely, the, the, the lives that have been saved, the awareness that has been raised, and of course, Kay Yao as well, the NC State women's basketball coach and the Kay Yao Foundation, but just what, what, what an impact his legacy has been able to make. Count it. Good out of bounds execution. Sanaya Rivers right away inbounding, knowing she's getting it back. Elevates over Citron, able to get the two. Second on Citron, seven points now for Rivers. Five point advantage. Westbell, good spot for her. She's really confident. Spotting up. She sure has, and she's been in rhythm. And I think Notre Dame can continue to try to get her some touches off the move. And again, they think about Maddie Westfeld, and she's a player who played the forward position, the post position, early in her career. And now, because of injuries, opportunity to play on the perimeter, and she's taken advantage of it. Prosper with the rebound. 
Westbelt has the only threes in this game by either team. Citron, oh my goodness. Oh, that was nasty, Sonia Citron. And reiterating, she's a sophomore. <laughs> I know. You know, the thing about Sonia Citron is she's just st so steady. She's so consistent. You always know what you're going to get. I mean, she's really just scratching the surface. Quick little crossover. Getting by one of the best defenders in the league in Sanaya right. Rivers and making it look easy. Wow. But you're right. I mean, her expression rarely changes. Baldwin pumped by Evo. And then she gives out the primal screen. And we talked about paint points, and there are a lot of different ways to get them. River Baldwin does a good job of pinning Lauren Ebo under the rim and getting the offensive rebound put back. Westbell gets the miss. Baldwin one of four today from the floor after hitting all seven of her shots yesterday and their win over Syracuse. Bransford tried to lay it off to Ebo. Ball fake from James, contact but no foul. Citron, Prosper couldn't handle it. Turnover number 15 for the Irish. Much better shooting in the third quarter. Yeah, second quarter, NC State, season low four points. Davis hit three straight shots now, and an offensive foul on the moving screen. Lauren Ebo shook her head and said, yep, that's the call. That's the only time I've seen players agree with the call, right? Yeah, right. right there. It was the other way. Yeah, and it was. River Baldwin just continuing to, to move into Sonia Citron. First one on Baldwin for the state transfer. Evo and Baldwin have a nice little battle going on. Evo can't do it. Baldwin with the screen gives Rivers just enough room. Timeout on the floor. NC State getting closer thanks to Rivers. They're down six. Wolfpack trying to make their run here. Just a two possession game and Saniya Rivers trying to do everything she can to will her team to a win. And probably thinking about that field she watched on WNBA players, specifically Diamond DeShield. She told us that in a game we did earlier that that's one player that she kind of gears her, her game towards and she's been compared to as well. I looked it up, both are 6'1", had that athleticism to the rim and also playmakers. I don't know how you feel about the comparison, but in her sophomore season, her ceiling so high. Yeah, I think you're right. Her ceiling is, is high and I would like to see her do a little bit more of, of that right there and, and hunt some shots offensively. I think she can be a really good offensive player as Maddie Westbell continues to stay hot from three. Maddie Westbell now with three threes. The only threes in the game. State is 0 for 8 from distance. Rivers elevating. Tonight Rivers also the only North Carolina native on the Wolfpack team. She's from Wilmington. Over on the coast, the Atlantic coast. And she didn't get a lot of playing time when she was down at South Carolina, won a national championship. T tough to crack, and it's a pretty good yeah, lineup, right? It's it not like pretty she was sitting behind me. Right, <laughs> she, right. Uh, but she's certainly getting her opportunity here at State. Yeah, she absolutely is. And you know, the opportunity to, to, to come back to the state of North Carolina and to be a part of this NC State Wolf Tech program. 
dispelled. No, Ebo kept it alive. Bransford gives Notre Dame a second chance. Inside a minute to go in the third quarter. Winner gets Louisville tomorrow in the semi. Citron, wide right. Rivers, here she goes. Guarded by Westfeld. Whistle on the play. Westfeld Fowler. That is the second. And the junior from Kettering, Ohio. Her sister played for Muffet McGraw. And earlier in this game, Maddie went over the 1,000 career point mark. They get a lot of those siblings that come through yeah. the programs, right? I think it's a family, family deal when you go to Notre Dame. Rivers at the line. Now into double figures. Great player coming out. In fact, was a national player of the year, according to USA Today. Made all of the All-American teams, including the McDonald's All-American game. Wolfpack showing a little three-quarter court pressure. Citron dribbled it out. Nice well guarded by Boyd now. Sonia Citron just bowled her way in. Offensive foul number is number 11. Third foul on Sonia Citron. Well, the step-up screen, and Citron just drives it right in between two players. And it looked to me like River Baldwin was still move, moving. And she wasn't moving backwards. She was moving sideways. But that's one of Baldwin's specialties, drawing charges. Shot clock off. Rivers. Still no threes. For NC State, they're outscored by four points in that quarter. Notre Dame up seven as we head to the fourth. How hype can you be? How psyched can you be? How loud can you get? Make some noise. Yes, it is champ week indeed, and here at the ACC Women's Tournament, Louisville taking care of Wake Forest, who upset Florida State yesterday. Louisville will play the winner of this game and one semifinal tomorrow in our night session. Virginia Tech and two-time player of the year, Liz Kitley takes on Miami, and then it's North Carolina and Duke for the third time. Muffet McGraw, her husband, Matt, and yes, that young man, Marcus Freeman, the head football coach at Notre Dame, coming out here to support the team. Nice of him to make the trip down to Greensboro. Foul out on the perimeter on Prosper. Marcus Freeman taking over that program. First Irish team foul the period. Matt still obviously heavily involved. We saw him all the time when Muffet was the head coach. And I, that would be tough for Muffet still to watch. NC State trying to get something going offensively. Jakia Brown Turner still. No threes. Lots of contact. Oh, Brown Turner. 0 for 5 from the floor. Only has a couple of points after 16 yesterday against Syracuse that included a couple of threes. Hayes ran into Citron. Citron playing with three personal fouls. Hayes just picked up her second. And if you're just joining us, no Olivia Miles out indefinitely. We expect some sort of an update next week. Screen left is Dara Mabry, who has been out since January 22nd, tore her ACL, also a tibia plateau fracture against Virginia. And not, not just one, but two, two huge losses. Two huge losses, two primary ball handlers. 
Two players who can play point guard, and now the Irish, they have a big lineup on the floor at all times. Some players playing out of position, but everybody's stepping up and contributing. No Diamond Johnson, foot in the boot for NC State. They hope to have her back for the NCAA tournament. Maddie Westbound playing on both ends of the floor. Got 13 points right behind Citron's 18. 11 points for Rivers, 10 for James. The two players in double figures for the pack. Another collision. And if that's on Watson, yep. Foul number four on Kylie Watson, so Lauren Ebo has to come back in. Notre Dame bench wafer thin with all of the injuries. And now foul trouble for Watson. Rivers shows you her ups. Westfeld coming away with it. Citron put the brakes on pretty quickly after she got close to Niel. And she's like, hold on. Citron, perfect. First look that she's gotten without the ball in her hands. She's just such a tough cover because she can do so many things well and her pace coming off the of screens is so good. But I like this, her being able to give the ball up and somebody else initiate offense. And Maddie Westbelt sets a great screen. Citron creates space. Miles and Mabry like that. And they're just like, yeah, those threes, I know a thing or two about threes. Just a little bit, right? That's the first three made by somebody not named Maddie Westbelt in this game. State 0 for 10 from distance. They normally make around six per game. Brown Turner, after being fouled by Bransford, gets them both. So Citron and Westbeld shooting well from the floor and getting most of the points, that combination. Notre Dame shooting 45%, the pack 36%. Evo delivers down low. Citron with another assist. That little Prosper action for you? How about that block by Kassan Prosper? Are you kidding me? Just when you think Sanaya Rivers has an easy lane to the rim, Prosper says, no thank you. Swats it out of bounds. Prosper, both of her family. Her, her, both her parents, pardon me, played collegiately at Concordia University in her hometown of Montreal. Rivers with the basket. 10 point deficit, seven and a half to go. Citron, gotta be careful. They're trying to draw charges on her. Remember, Sonia is playing with three. This is just a heck of an individual effort by Prosper using her length. Outstretched hand, look at that. <laughs> yeah, we talked to Niel Ivy last week and she's so excited about Prosper. Says that she's got kind of like a coach's dream again. Came out, she should still be in high school. Film junkie, wants to learn, takes instruction, very coachable, and you can see that athletically. Wait till she grows up. Yeah, of course, and, and Neil Ivey said it was such a blessing at the time that she came, uh, especially Dear Mabry, lost nuts soon after that. Gives him another body, another perimeter player. Terrific individual defender. 6'2 freshman. Ball goes over to the Irish as Boyd goes out of bounds. And the fans, Pack fans get a little surly right now with their team down 12. Well, it's been a physical game, you know, but it's it's been able to be physical on both sides. It's certainly, it's tournament time. It's March, Pam. Almost a turnover. It looks like 
Jada Boyd might have turned her ankle a little bit, but she gets up. Ebo into Citron, who got fouled by Rivers. Yeah, much better ball movement by Notre Dame in the second half. Second foul on Rivers. James coming in now for Hayes. Citron heads back to the free throw line where she is four for five. A reminder to fans to download the ACC Three Point Challenge app presented by New York Life to help benefit the local boys and girls club. Score points for your school after the tournament. Local Boys and Girls Club receive a donation from New York Life based on their affiliated ACC team's final ranking. 14-point advantage is the largest lead of the game for the Irish. Hobby took steps. Good defense by Ebo. Wealth turnover for Westmore's team. NC State projected to be a seven seed by Charlie Cream. Selection Sunday, a week from Sunday coming up. He's got Notre Dame as a three. Which means they would host. Always big. Shot clock at five. It's Citron time. Ebo had it taken away by James. Doesn't have numbers, but she's going to challenge Westbell. Backs off. And a foul called as Boyd gathered the ball in the lane. Second on Bransford. Four team fouls against the Irish. The next one will send the pack to the line. Wolfpack have not been able to get many shot opportunities here in the fourth quarter. Everything is highly contested. The Irish continue changing up their defenses, playing in the 2-3, playing in the man-to-man. -man. There's Jakia Brown. Turner getting the three. The first three of the game for NC State. They had missed their first 10. And that gets the crowd going a little bit. Watson's going to come back in with four fouls for the Irish. Westbell, foul on Notre Dame. Miscommunication in the zone, in the half court, Jakia Brown-Turner able to capitalize. Well below their average, sorry Steph. And this is big Pam right now. NC State's having trouble scoring the basketball in the fourth quarter, and now they're at the foul line in the penalty for the rest of the game. So if I'm NC State, I'm looking to continue to put pressure on this defense, attack, force rotations, get high percentage looks, get opportunities at the foul line. It's the best of both worlds. You can score with the, cl with the clock stopped. James just a 65% free throw shooter on the season. On them both. And big time pressure on Bransford. You couldn't even hear the whistle because the crowd is so loud. NC State looking to try to turn up the pressure and Jada Boy just a little over aggressive. Defense, 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 defense. 
Citron over to Bransford. This second half, Notre Dame much more like the Fighting Irish. 14 assists in the ball game, and coming out of halftime, nine assists to four turnovers. In the first half, Pam, it was five to 12. Yeah. So moving the basketball more, sharing the basketball, and as a result, getting better looks. A timeout with Notre Dame up 11. The Ally ACC Women's Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an ally. The winner of this game will play Louisville in tomorrow's semifinal. Haley Van Lith, 17 points alone in the first quarter as they beat Wake Forest 74 to 48. Two more games coming your way today on the ACC Network in the quarters. If Notre Dame hangs on to this lead, they're going to play Louisville for the third time in about a two and a half week span, and those first two games were beauties. They sure were. Notre Dame winning both games by a total of five points. This is the sixth time Notre Dame has come into this tournament as the number one seed, and the other five times, they won it. First four years they were in the league, and then again in 2019, number one seed, thanks to their win over Louisville, and Duke's loss to North Carolina on Sunday. They have played a really good second half. Everything coming difficult for State on the offensive end. JVT with another three. Her second. And then the steal, Boyd scores. Neil Ivey decided not to take a timeout. Watson and got clobbered by James. That's five quick points for State. The NC State had a couple opportunities for a ball reversal, didn't get it, but they got it right on time for Jakia Brown Turner to knock down a three and then defensively continuing with this pressure. Sonia Rivers gets the deflection, the steal, and the putback for Jada Boyd. And foul on James puts Watson on the line as Westmore talks to Jakia Brown-Turner, his only returning starter from last year's team. Huge board for Westbelt. Sure was, Maddie Westbelt. What a job to get in position to get that offensive rebound. Her eighth, making her ninth rebound. Watson knocked away by Collins. Two on one. They save it for Rivers. Citron couldn't handle it. Boyd missed the first time. The second one won't go in, and Maddie Westfeld got another rebound, and a foul has been called on NC State. Boy, Westfeld just now with 10 rebounds on the day, James has picked up another foul. She's got four. And you saw the frustration on Jada Boyd's face. She wants that one back. Had a couple opportunities at the rim. So Westfeld with a double-double today, 13 points and 10 rebounds. Now at the free throw line, both teams in the bonus. I cannot say enough of how Olivia Miles is not just a vocal leader with her team on the floor, but on the sidelines as well. To mention assistant coach Sherelle Allen is not with Notre Dame due to personal reasons. So Olivia Miles is sitting in that assistant coach chair being vocal and trying to do everything she can from the sidelines to give this team energy. Sitting right next to Michaela Mabry. She's actually been standing a lot over there on the bench along with Dara Mabry. The two injured stars for this team. Collins stuffed by Watson. Irish ball. And again, Olivia Miles out indefinitely. The Irish not getting more specific than that. And they only have two good legs between them, but they're still <laughs> getting up and hopping around and celebrating. 
Yeah, you, you know, and, and that's your two vocal leaders. And Neil Ivey talked about when Dara Mabry went down, how Olivia Miles had to step up from a leadership standpoint. She couldn't rely on Mabry on the floor anymore. And now Olivia Miles is out, and that's got to be Sonia Citron, Maddie Westbell, two of your more experienced players in this system on the floor. Citron, that's off the mark. James Watson is able to knock it away. Great hustle by Kylie Watson. I mean, just when you think NC State may have an opportunity in transition. What a hustle play by Watson. State retains possession with 26 seconds to shoot. Get an opportunity now for the Irish to get your defense set. Brown Turner, got a good fourth quarter. A couple of threes and now that two. Westbell brings it over the timeline. Prosper's gonna wait for Citron. Tony Citron coming off of season high 27 in the win at Louisville last week, turning it up when Miles got hurt in the second quarter. She's got 23 today. Rivers commits the foul. Two on that trip. And a sophomore from East Chester, New York. That's tipped. Leads to a turnover. That's a dangerous place to give KK Bransford the ball. Boy, wasn't it? Neil so Ivey didn't like what that was looking like. Uh, like so, what is that timeout? <laughs> We'll take one as well and be back in 30 seconds. Welcome back to Greensboro where Notre Dame is holding on to an eight point advantage. Just a little over a minute and a half left to go in the second of four quarterfinals. Pam Ward, Stephanie White, and it is champ week here. The ACC championship will be Sunday at one Eastern time on ESPN, followed by the SEC. We'll be in Minneapolis for the Big Ten Caitlin Clark, Sunday at 5 Eastern time. They got a couple of games yeah, first. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. It's just so much fun to watch her play. Is. Then the Pac-12, the Big 12, Angel Gray with us as well. Natty Westfeld and Sonia Citron really coming up huge with no Olivia Miles today. No Diamond Johnson for NC State. They're going to rest her until the NCAA tournament. Westfeld with a double-double today. third of the season. Clock right now is Notre Dame's best friend. Brown Turner with the foul with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Second one on her. Both well, teams in the bonus. Brown Turner with 10 points here in the fourth quarter, but we're running out of time. Got them both. Citron has backed up last week's 27 point game with 26 today. It's not good. bad. Not bad. Yeah, back not bad at all. And, and she's doing this while being the primary ball handler for this team. A lot on her shoulders. You, she's unfazed. Doesn't seem to be rattled by much of anything. Nice by James. 13 points for her. Big time pressure. They need to get the ball. Ball handler by committee for Notre Dame. Rivers took it away and then a subsequent foul. 
on Bransford. Well, you certainly don't want to foul right now if you're the Irish. Give NC State opportunity to score with no time running off the clock. When you think about this as sort of, you know, a, 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 an easing into game for the Irish, a team in NC State that doesn't usually press a lot, don't turn people over a lot, can do this ball handling by committee. But as they continue to face different types of teams, how will they be able to handle consistent pressure? 94 feet in the half court, get into offense, be playmakers for yourself and other people. Another timeout in Greensboro. 30 second timeout. Let's take a look at our Bojangles big bow moment of tonight's game. Sonia Citron, they needed her to have a good game, and she did. She sure did, and she was absolutely huge, not just big <laughs> for, for Notre Dame. I mean, scoring in a lot of different ways, particularly early in the ball game, giving Notre Dame some easy buckets. And, and then I, I felt like did a much better job of managing her team in the second half. Multiple players touched the ball, it got moving a little bit more, more assists, less turnovers, and just being that constant, consistent presence on the floor. One point behind her season high of 27, which she had at Louisville on Sunday when Miles went out of the game. They are looking more and more like they will be playing Louisville for the third time in the semis tomorrow. Citron also has five assists and eight rebounds. I'm not sure why NC State's not fouling. Now Wes Moore is saying, come on out and foul her, but it took a while. I think he wanted a double team to try to get a quick maybe trap and steal out of a trap. And whoever was supposed to come didn't make it. Okay. So that ultimately resulted in the foul on Rivers. And way too much time running yeah. off the clock. Just 38.9 seconds left to go. And Citron back at a familiar spot. Ties her season high. James able to recover. Rebound, good effort by Hayes to try to get to it. And another whistle against the Irish. And that will foul out Kylie Watson. So Ebo will come in for her. Watson five points and a rebound this afternoon. Ebo comes back in. Madison Hayes. Madison Hayes, the Mississippi State transfer. Her first trip to the line this afternoon. It's a both. Notre Dame takes the timeout with 28 seconds. Left. Two more basketball games for you this afternoon on the ACC network. And there is the number three seed, Virginia Tech Hokies. Liz Kitley, back to back ACC Player of the Year. Saw Kayla King coming in. And I don't see her there. One of your favorites, right? Georgia Amor. Absolutely. One of my favorite point guards in the conference in the country. And the improvement that she's had from a year ago, just from a confidence standpoint, offensively, has been fun to see. And they will be playing Miami in our nightcap this evening. First, at 6 Eastern time, it's Duke, North Carolina. Carolina has beaten Duke twice this year. And NC State, 10 straight wins. Remember, they are the three-time defending champs in this tournament. Have not lost in this tournament since 2019. And again, too much time running off the clock. No sense of urgency right now for the Wolfpack. JVT with the foul. 
KK Bransford, ACC All Freshman, was the freshman of the week in the last season, the, the last week of the season, pardon me. She also helped pick up the slack in the win at Louisville, 14 points. Wes Moore takes the timeout. So these, the teams we're gonna see tomorrow barring a big comeback will be Notre Dame and Louisville in the semis. They played last Sunday in a good one. 76 all, Notre Dame a chance to win it. Citron will inbound. Miles for the win! That wasn't last Sunday, that was a couple of weeks. The first time they played, and it was in overtime when Olivia Miles hit the three to win that game. And then last week when Miles went out late in the second quarter, Notre Dame came from behind to win at Louisville. Now we get them, now they're gonna get them for the third time. And that's the way it is shaping up. We're gonna go ahead and Push it through, that will be at noon Eastern time tomorrow on the ACC Network. Virginia Tech, Miami, Duke, North Carolina. The winners will play after that in the other semi. So T.R. Cruz comes over and tells us that the timeout hasn't officially been granted yet. There is a potentially unobserved contact that they're looking at. Lauren Ebo shove in the back of Mimi Collins. And if that's the case, I mean, again, the Irish is not smart plays, the defensively fouling and this unnecessary contact on that play as well. Each of these opportunities for the Wolfpack to score with no time running off the clock. It's Rod Creech. Rod Creech along with Tierra Cruz, Lisa Green, the third member of the officiating crew this afternoon. I don't know if you're looking at it to be an unobserved intentional foul. I don't know that you can, you can call that. NC State had a four-point lead after one in this as we take a look at it again. They only scored four points in the second quarter when the game turned. Now the officials are discussing it. I'll take this time to thank Seth Miller, our producer, Matt Wilson, our director, Anthony Abra Abrahams, perhaps the best. After Everything. Review, we have an intentional foul on 33 for Notre Dame. It would be two shots for North Carolina State and then a ball on side out. Well, that is so big. And you just want the game like to run out the string, right? Get out of here with the W. So, yeah, it's just not a smart play. No. So you get two free throws and the ball. Potential for a four or five point play. Collins' first point of the game. And Turner kicks it out to Rivers. You don't have to settle, you're in the penalty, go to the rim. Not a great shot and it took a lot of time. And, and again, like, you don't have to settle. Notre Dame has shown that they will foul you if you go to the rim, put some pressure on it. NC State foul number 
Jones. Zaya James has just fouled out of the game for State. 14 points, five rebounds, and four assists. You, you look at just the, the game situations and, you know, double digits on the clock. You've got plenty of timeouts. You just want to get a quick score. If you can get an opportunity to get a layup, get a foul, or get a drive and kick for a shot, then you foul and you've got timeouts to move the ball. Citron, another one for two at the line. Trip. She gets a new season high in scoring. And the Fighting Irish hold on to beat NC State 66-60. The L. Ivy's club moving on to the semifinals. Well, they will play Louisville for the third time this season. Citron, 28 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Maddie Westfeld with the double-double. 14 points apiece for Rivers and James for the pack. It's certainly not an easy road, but this Fighting Irish team has showed resilience all season long, and to be able to continue to step up in, in moments, send Citron, Westfeld, making big plays and carrying this team. Notre Dame with the victory today, even though they didn't get a single field goal in the last five minutes of the fourth quarter. They got quite a few at the free throw line, and the one in the four seed will meet for the third time tomorrow at noon Eastern. The first two were a lot of fun, and we expect that tomorrow. Virginia Tech, Miami coming up after Duke and North Carolina here on the ACC Network. The final will be one Eastern time Sunday on ESPN. And NC State falls to 20 and 11 on the season again. Charlie Cream projects them to be a number seven seed, does not anticipate that they will have the opportunity to host in the first and second rounds after getting to the Elite Eight and losing in double overtime, that heartbreaker to UConn last year. But boy, Sonia Citron, just a sophomore, so much expected, so much needed, and she delivered, and then some. And she is over here with Angel Gray. Barely a smile on her face, really. Not much sweat on your forehead either, but when you're looking at how you guys win this game without Olivia Miles, coach told me at halftime, you guys were without your heartbeat, but you gave this team life today. In what ways do you think it was important for you guys to really step up today? Yeah, I mean, obviously with uh, Olivia out today, um, everyone has to step up. Uh, she's a big part of our team, and losing her today was, I mean, it's tough, and we just have to figure out how to play without her. Um, and I think that our my team stepped up, and everyone individually um, just gave their best, and we got the outcome we wanted. And you made some history yourself as well. You were the first player since Arike Agumbawale to have back-to-back -back games with 25 points or more. When you're looking at your impact, what was your mindset coming into this game after the challenge that Coach Neil Ivey gave you before the Louisville game? Um, I mean, I know my team needs me, and I'm going to try to contribute in any way I can. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess uh, being the, the point guard since Liv is out, um, I'm definitely still learning a lot. Um, but I have a lot of help from my teammates and my coaches. Um, yeah, and I'm just I'm trying to help my team as best as I can. I love that. Being done by committee at halftime, you guys had only four assists. You finished with 14. What was the message then, and what did you see that you guys needed to adjust in order to get to that number? Yeah, um, I mean, we just had to calm down. Um, I know a bunch of us were nervous, so it was just, I mean, we're playing basketball. We know how to do that. So just calm down, play our game. We knew NC State was really packing the paint and sitting off. So we had to stop just driving and taking charges. Um, just pull up, spread, spread the floor, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Yeah, Sonia Citron certainly does know how to play basketball. Another season high in scoring back to back for her. They will play Louisville tomorrow as Notre Dame takes it by the final of 66 to 60. For Stephanie White and Angel Gray, I'm Pam Ward as we say so long for now. Coming up next, ACC PM.
Field in Greensboro, and man, we've already seen some terrific games. NC State, Notre Dame, another typical game with big time players making big time plays. Taylor Tannenbaum. Sonia Citron, you just heard from her there. She's been tasked with a lot, Pack. I mean, this little guy obviously has no idea what just happened in the game, but he's just happy to be here. This little one says, way to go, Sonia Citron, way to go, Maddie Westfeld. But Citron tasked with a lot without Olivia Miles out there. Darren Mabry, they lost a couple of weeks ago. She's now handling the point guard position. Keep in mind, she is still just a sophomore, so this is only her second time on this stage. Uh, so a big win for Notre Dame, and, and look, look at what, that. Look what, well, first of all, <laughs> great it. games tonight, which we'll talk about. Duke, North Carolina, part three. Virginia Tech, Miami, later tonight. That's the last game. But look what we get tomorrow at high noon. You talk about the perfect Saturday. Louisville and Notre Dame, they've played two unbelievable games, and they just played here the last couple of weeks. Grand total of five points, the difference. Notre Dame won both of them. Yeah, I feel like because it's a high noon game and this is like a wild, wild west shootout, you should have like nah, 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 that kind of music, you know, and here they are. You got to give Sonia all the props in the world, and she also gets the sticker to put on the bracket to show that they are moving on to go face the Cardinals. She's going to join us, actually, Pack, in about 10 minutes. And I'm sure her smile will be that big for the rest of the night until they realize what they have ahead because Louisville looks really good today, too. Yeah, and there's Olivia Miles, and of course, day-to-day, we, -day, we want to get to see her play, right? She's such a great player. But, man, Sonia has really stepped up and played not only great today when they had to have it, but also that last Louisville game, right? When Olivia goes down, she steps up, goes crazy. Again, that matchup, and, and this goes back even to when Muffet was coaching at Notre Dame, and Jeff Falls, the intensity of Notre Dame and Louisville. Again, DNA championship teams and programs. We talk about that all the time. Now Neil Ivey's putting her fingerprints on this program. It's the continuation of really an awesome rivalry. And like I said, if the game tomorrow at high noon is anything like the first two, college basketball fans are going to be in for a treat. Should yeah. be out of sight. And guess what? We get that for a little three-peat on the season. And then later today, following us, you're going to have Duke the Carolina. third meeting between Duke and UNC. So how about that? You get some of these great rivalry matchups here on this stage in Greensboro, which, which is so exciting. You also can't overlook the fact that Notre Dame coming in as the one seed, of course, without Olivia Miles, though, just knocked off the three-time defending champs of this ACC tournament in NC State. I know they haven't been the NC State of years past. They've certainly struggled offensively, but they were great yesterday offensively, the Wolfpack. They shot 61% from the field, scored 54 points in the paint, which was a season high for them this year. Notre Dame did great on them defensively, held them to just 28 points in the paint today. They went with a bigger lineup, the Irish, to try to combat that. Uh, they were also two for 15 from beyond the arc, NC State, so just not their night shooting. Uh, but for the Irish, they executed the game plan to perfection. And I know we're going to talk a lot about Sonia Citron, Maddie Westbeld stepped up to it, and a couple of other pieces because they've been very vocal about the fact that when you're losing two of your leaders and your two players that are the best on the team and Dara Mabry and Olivia Miles, it has to be a total team effort. It can't be on just one person's shoulder. Well, that's been the one thing that I think Coach Ivey's done a nice job this year, and it's why she was the coach of the year, that, you know what, you have defections, you have injuries, you got to figure it out. They've recruited extremely well. they got terrific talent. But this is still a really young basketball Very. team. All right? And I think that's the one thing that folks need to understand. They are still capable of getting a Final Four run here. They may win the ACC championship for all we know. We'll find out this weekend. But they almost look like they're built for a ridiculous run even next year. And the fact that so many folks are being able to step up and make quality minutes and play, it's only going to make it even better for Notre Dame, I think, next year. But this is a team I still think can get to a Final Four. Yeah, we were just laughing. I was sitting here because I had to do the halftime of this game and sitting next to Kelly Gramlich. And you're looking at Cass Prosper coming off the bench who, who finished with five points, but she gave them some great minutes right. in the first half when they really needed to keep pace with NC State. And Sonia really was carrying a majority of the load there early. She should still be in high school. She enrolled early here at Notre Dame in December, like around Christmas time. So she's very, very young. KK Bransford's still just a freshman. She's going to have to play a big role without Miles and Lyle. Well, here's the other thing, too. When you play in this kind of tournament, and again, the beauty of the double bye is everybody else is playing. You get a chance to chill out, and now you got to go play. But again, everybody that shows up for this tournament expects to be playing Sunday at 1 o'clock to win a championship. Amen. And Notre Dame comes in there as the one seed. We've already told you. The five previous times Notre Dame's been the one seed in this tournament, they've gone W, 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 W. They've won the title every single time. You need other players to give you some quality minutes. And if you can steal some time, man, that's great because you expect to be here and play three days and win three days if you're a number one seed.